Hello, I'm Stuart Scott, and I just want to give you an update on some of the AWS content that my team and I have been working on here at Cloud Academy recently. Firstly, the much anticipated learning path for the AWS Data Analytics Specialty Exam is now available in preview in our library. Covering the elements required across all five of the domains outlined in the exam guide, it currently contains over 18 hours of content, including 14 courses, 10 labs, a lab challenge, a webinar, and an assessment exam. All of this covers services including Amazon S3, Redshift, Athena, Glue, Kinesis, RDS, DynamoDB, Lambda, and Amazon QuitSite, to name but a few. So if you're looking to gain the most recent AWS certification released, come and take a look at our learning path. We have three new courses relating to databases that I want to mention. The first one being an overview of differences between AWS database types. And this course provides a high level overview of the managed database offerings available from AWS. It covers relational and non-relational databases, how they work, their strengths, and what workloads are best suited for them. It includes an overview of the characteristics of non-relational databases, as well as what NoSQL means and why it's important to application development. This course is ideally suited for people that are relatively new to relational and non-relational databases and want to gain an understanding of what types of databases are available on AWS. Next we have a course which looks at the backup and restore capabilities of RDS and DynamoDB. During this course you will learn the different backup features that are available between these database services, how to identify the differences between them and when you should use one over the other. The course also explains how to copy and share RDS snapshots across regions and AWS accounts. The concepts covered in this course are complemented with guided demonstrations to ensure you get a real world understanding of the process. The last database related course I want to highlight is the security best practices when working with AWS databases. And this specifically looks at RDS and DynamoDB with some extra content related to Aurora. You'll learn how to recognize common security vulnerabilities and recommended ways to resolve these security issues, as well as understand some best practices that will help create secure architectures for your database solutions. It covers encryption at rest and in transit, how to protect your data by limiting the attack surface, SQL injection protection, and working with the least privilege and more. Next, we have a course that focuses on how to convey your data through visualizations. This new course explores how to interpret your data, allowing you to effectively decide which chart type you should use to visualize your and convey your data when working with data analytics. Using the correct visualization techniques allows you to gain the most from your data. And in this course, I look at the importance of data visualization before moving on to how to best visualize data relationships using scatter charts and bubble charts, data comparisons using bar charts, column charts, and line charts, data distribution using histograms, and data composition using pie charts, stacked column charts, 100% stacked column charts, and tree maps. The team has also been involved in a couple of webinars recently that I'd like to share and point out. Firstly, on the 17th September, Will Meadows and myself took a deep dive look at domain one of the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate. Now, this was the first in a four-part webinar series where each subsequent webinar in the series will focus on the next domain of the certification. In this webinar, we looked at the AWS global infrastructure, what's involved when designing a multi-tier architecture, what to look out for when designing highly available and or fault tolerant architectures, which services might be involved when designing decoupled solutions, and the considerations to think about when selecting appropriate resilient storage. Also on the 24th of September, Stephen Cole and Will Meadows looked at decoupling architectures with AWS, how to set them up and manage them successfully. They dive into topics covering the Elastic Load Balancer, the Simple Queue Service, the Simple Notification Service, and serverless and microservices. They enforce how decoupling architectures is very much central to efficient cloud architectures. It saves costs, increases reliability, and improves scaling. So if you want to learn more about this framework for complex work that allows components to remain completely autonomous and unaware of each other, then check out the webinar here. 